Before moving on to the complex biochemistry of vision, we need to orient ourselves. This diagram is of a rod cell. The vertical orange bar near the right is the plasma membrane of the rod cell. The blue region to its right lies outside of the plasma membrane and represents the extracellular fluid. The lighter orange region to the left of the vertical orange bar lies inside of the plasma membrane and represents the cytosol of the rod cell. The mostly horizontal orange bar represents the membrane of a rod photoreceptor disc. The light purple region lying above this disc membrane represents the region inside of the rod disc. Embedded within the rod photoreceptor disc membrane are rhodopsin molecules. Each rhodopsin molecule consists of a protein called opsin with a much smaller pigment molecule called retinal bound inside of it. The diagram shows an inactive rhodopsin molecule, which is capable of absorbing a photon of light. In the inactive state, retinal exists in its 11 cis retinal configuration. The first step is activation of rhodopsin. This occurs when a photon strikes the 11 cis retinal molecule in rhodopsin. The energy of the photon causes 11 cis retinal to isomerize to 11 trans retinal. The change in shape of retinal causes a conformational change in the opsin protein that binds it, leading to activation of rhodopsin. The second step is activation of transducin. Opsin is a member of a large family of related receptor proteins called GPCRs or G protein coupled receptors. Like all the other members, Opsin has seven transmembrane alpha helices and a cytosolic region that interacts with a particular heterotrimeric G protein. For opsin, the G protein is transducent. The activation of rhodopsin involved a conformational change in the opsin protein, but the change was not limited to the region directly surrounding the retinal. It also affected the cytosolic region of opsin. The cytosolic G protein transducin can interact with the activated opsin protein. As a result, transducin releases a bound GDP, that's guanosine diphosphate, and picks up a GTP, that's guanosine triphosphate. This activates transducin. The third step is activation of PDE. PDE stands for phosphodiesterase. It is an enzyme that cleaves certain phosphodiester bonds. The activated, that is the GTP bound, transducin binds with PDE. This binding activates PDE. The fourth step is conversion of cyclic GMP into quote unquote regular GMP. As stated above, Phosphodiesterase is an enzyme that cleaves certain phosphodiester bonds. In particular, it cleaves a certain bond in cyclic GMP, thereby breaking the ring and forming regular GMP. The fifth step is closing of the CNG channel. Rod cells have in their plasma membrane sodium channels, which allow sodium ions, Na+, to flow in. Because of the constant flow of sodium ions into the rod cell, the membrane potential, basically the electric charge across the membrane, is higher than that in resting neurons. Remember, the sodium ions are positively charged. This results in the constant release of the neurotransmitter glutamate from the synaptic terminals of the rod cell. The sodium channel in a rod cell is a CNG channel, that is, a cyclic nucleotide gated channel. In other words, the presence or absence of a cyclic nucleotide bound to the channel determines whether or not the channel remains open or closed. For the rod cell sodium channel, it needs cyclic GMP bound to it in order to remain open. The PDE mediated degradation of cyclic GMP, it's converting it into regular GMP, led to the loss of cyclic GMP from the sodium channel's binding sites and thus to the closing of the sodium channels. With the sodium channels closed, no more sodium ions can flow into the cell. 
Remember, sodium ions are positively charged. So with a sudden drop in positive ions entering the cell, the cytosol becomes very negative. The membrane hyperpolarizes, and the neurotransmitter glutamate stops being released from the synaptic terminals. In response to the sudden drop in glutamate, the bipolar cells that the rod cell synapse with change their state, either hyperpolarizing or depolarizing. Either way, a signal that a photon has been absorbed has started its way towards the brain.